start planning for your retirement. Plan now and Call make your golden no years golden. I Come, know, I know. let's make it happen. I know. I know, I know. I know, I know. Hello once again and uh, welcome to the third and final episode of this three-part series on retirement planning. The series is brought to you by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank ECCB in collaboration with the National Television Network, NTN. In the first two sessions, we had an opportunity to touch on uh, transitioning into retirement, estate planning, maintaining property value, insurance, and NIC benefits. In this third and final series um, episode, what we will be doing is attempting to tie everything in together and we'll be touching on financial planning, creating growth and protecting your wealth. I am your moderator, Elijah Williams, and with me, my esteemed panel of guests, to my immediate right, Mr. Omar Bird Smith, Business Development Officer for Citizens Investment Services Limited. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Mrs. Tecla D. Turville, uh, CEO of Celestial Self Development Center, and attorney at law, Ms. Trudy O. Glasgow. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, we can uh, start with you, uh, Mr. Smith. Um, from a standpoint of uh, financial management, um, you know, people oftentimes, um, when they get to retirement age, start figuring it out in terms of how do they manage their finances, what allocations are made, etc., from a budget standpoint, etc. Um, as the uh, finance person, how would you advise that one goes about, and and what within what time frame do you think one should start, you know, planning financially for retirement? Right. <coughs> Thank you, Eli. Um, one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have is that financial planning or financial management are for, for individuals with, with wealth. And that's not really the case. Um, once you earn an income, which is most adults, um, you should be practicing prudent financial planning and prudent financial management. And financial planning and financial management should really tie into your life's goals. And as you move along in each stage of life, there'll be different goals that you're trying to attain and you can plan for accordingly. So let's say from the age of 18, between the age of 18 and 25, you're probably trying to achieve a certain level of education and that involves a course. So you can start planning from there. Um, beyond that, let's say from 25 to, to 35, you're probably trying to have some savings, acquire some land, get married, start a family. All these things require financial planning because it's not wise to go into these, these sort of transitions in life without understanding the implication for your finances and the costs involved. You understand? So let's say you're 25 and you're thinking, okay, I want to buy a piece of land. This is how much I earn. How much do I need to save to meet the down payment, to pay the legal fees? And to deal with any other costs, paying the value the, the, for evaluation, paying the bank, bank fees and whatnot. What are the costs that I need to cover? Okay, X. I need to save an additional $30,000 in the next five years. How do I go about doing that? And that's the sort of way we have to start thinking. So the same applies to The same applies to retirement. Plan. Now, this, sort, this plan, will, planning like that would take you throughout life with the ultimate goal being ready for retirement. Because at... At the end of it all, you still have to retire. And it's never too late to start planning for retirement. So while you have immediate goals in front of you, like I said, it should be attached to goals in front of you. You'd have short-term goals, you have intermediate goals, and you have long-term goals. The long-term goal being that of, of retirement. And depending on where you are in terms, yeah. of, in terms of age. Um, Mrs. De Tourville, um oftentimes you find you know, people approach retirement as just another phase of life. 
I'm not necessarily taking it from the standpoint of, as uh, Mrs. Smith was saying, um, the financial implications. And when they get to that age of retirement, oftentimes, is, you know, when people start giving some serious thought into retirement. Um, from a psychological standpoint, you know, how do you think that that affects, you know, an individual not being properly prepared to face retirement age? Uh, it, could, it could have some serious implications. Um, and the way I see it is that um, we should begin to think retirement from the time we start to work. And so it's a question of um, the mindset. And I think, you know, uh, organizations, when, when they employ people, um, in terms of the orientation, should really begin to condition, you know, to, 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 to have people begin to think that, yes, I'm, 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 I'm beginning a job now, but I'm, there is that ultimate goal. And, and like, you know, like um, Omar said, in terms of, the, you know, that long-term thing. So you, you begin to think about it. And because the better prepared you are mentally, the better you would be able to handle the challenges or the joys that come with retirement. But it's something you have. You, it's a case of if you have the, you have been conditioned, you've been given the information. So I mean, organizations can maybe bring in, spe you know, specialists, finance people, you know, people in investment, legal people to come and just give staff the information, give people the knowledge, so that they can prepare themselves mentally. So when they get to that place, whether it's by choice, they could say, well, I, I choose not to work after my retirement. Some people do do that. But you should, it, should be, it should not be that you get to the point where you have to work right. because you have not planned sufficiently. It should be that you choose whether you want to continue to work or not. And you can only do that if you plan properly and if you condition yourself in terms of, you know, you're aware of what, you know, what it entails, um, what you would require, what your finances are, where you are in terms of your own, you know, financial standing. Um, and so all of this would help, you know, have that mindset. So when you get there, you know, it's, it's not something we should wait two years or one year before we retire and say, oh, I'm retiring, you know, t next week or next month in the next couple of months. Uh, let, me, let me start doing something. It has to be continuous. It has to be ongoing and we should prepare ourselves mentally because it, 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 it does call for some changes. You, you raise an interesting point in terms of organizations, um, you know, advising employees um, to be prepared along the lines of retirement. Mm -hmm. How aware do you think most organizations are in that regard? Because very often we see organizations um, making investments and increasing aware awareness for current employees so that they can get the most out of these staff that are still working for them. Mm -hmm. And we don't often see them place much emphasis on you know, preparing staff for life after the workplace. Um, how much, how sensitized do you think that the, the, the organizations are in that regard? I, I think most well-run HR departments would have a sort of retirement um, information or, you know, to, to be in a position to induct their staff in terms of what the expectations are. So um, maybe some organizations may decide to have a, a, a session, maybe annual, for people who are preparing to, to retire so that, you know, um, they, they know exactly what to do, what, what is expected. But if, you, if an organization thinks in terms of developing its people, you know, holistically, um, it's... You know, it's not far-fetched to think that um, because I'm not going to benefit from you when you retire, I, I wouldn't share that information with you. For instance, some organizations have pension plans. Mm -hmm. And um, with a pension plan, it may be contributory. But again, just to be able to provide people with information on an annual basis, say, this is where your pension plan stands, this is where you're at now, this is how much you will get when, you know, when on retirement. And so that people can make informed decisions as to, you know, what their what they, how they live their lives, what they do, what they can afford, so that when the time comes, they have something to. So some people have pension plans and some people don't, and some people have maybe they, some people have to depend on NIC. And you know, it's not usual for people to say, well, okay, should I go into NIC to find out, you know, how much I'm entitled to when I retire at even is, is, is 60, 60 or 65. You know, and it's not, in, and, and we have to take responsibility as well. Um, in addition to the, the organizations providing information and maybe exposing people to experts who could give them that information, I think as individuals we have to take responsibility for our retirement because it is a it is a big change, it is a big step, it is it it can be very demanding, 
And if we're not prepared for it, we could really be, you know, um, heading, you know, you have lived all your life and you've worked, and then you're at a stage where, you know, you really can't make ends meet, and that is what is likely to happen if there isn't that planning, that, you know, awareness, that knowledge that, hey, I'm, I'm going to get there, and I need to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. So from an HR standpoint, um, you think that should be an agenda item yeah, in terms of HR? Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, uh, like you rightfully said, there are a lot of companies, they have pension plans, but um, it is something that is more or less of a formality. The sensitization about retirement is a completely different kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so you're suggesting that, you know, HR departments, especially organizations that have properly structured HR departments mm -hmm. should make that as an agenda item. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we'll go to a break. Uh, when we get back, we will uh, get um, attorney at law, Ms. Trudio Glasgow, involved with the conversation. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the secretariat of the organization a grouping of officials headed by a director general, mandated to implement the decisions of the governments, but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. There are the commissioners from each member state who, along with the Director General, form the commission that oversees the work programs. There are also technical divisions with specialized units between them, as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past, and together we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. And welcome back. And again, we are discussing retirement planning uh, in this uh, third and final series. Ms. Glasgow, um, estate planning, that is a big thing. Um, quite a few St. Lucians, we're probably not aware of estate planning or probably think it's not for us. Um, what do you say to that? Um, thank you for having me. Uh, well, a large part of estate planning is just to organize yourself, and as my two uh, panelists have indicated earlier, you have to start early. So it's about financial, psychological, and then the legal side of it. So for the legal side of it, uh, one of the best ways you can plan your estate is to have a will. Because if you don't have a will, it means that you're leaving it to others to decide what happens to your, your estate. Um, so making a will, as my father indicated to me, he made a will when he was 35. Now, he didn't have a grandson at the time, so I hope he's revised it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is something you need to do quite early. And my father's now retired for five years. So he planned um, his retirement. He worked for, he was in banking, and he worked there for a very long time. In fact, he worked for two banks, retired twice. Um, but that's another uh, story. But the point I'm making is that you must start your planning early. Now, the importance of wills really comes in because it gives the person making all the arrangements, in other words, the testator, control. Um, you can leave everything, walk in here, and leave it to the two cameramen, whoever you like. But if you don't do that, and there are persons you're very close to, they're not related to you, they will not end up with anything. So it is important when you're thinking about planning for your retirement that you think along the lines of making a will. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, uh, the, the law does not make provisions for people who are outside of your immediate family. Is that the case? Uh, no. Um, the law does not, in other words, I your family members, and, and I mean the civil code, I, I miss Hill for the terrible at this moment, <laughs> uh, uh, will speak to what happens in terms of if you're children, and we, we did that in our segment in terms of legitimate and illegitimate children, etc. But your immediate family would be the ones, I mean you're married, we're looking at someone who's married and you pass away, then it would go straight immediately to your immediate, your wife and your children in, in, in shares. Um, but let's say, for example, you're strange from your wife. 
I, mean, yeah. I deal with a lot of divorces, so I can tell you this happens more likely than not. You're estranged, you're living with someone else, okay? And this someone else is now your partner and you want this person to inherit. You haven't made a will, it's going to your wife. It's going to your children. And you may not be speaking to your children. So you can take control of the situation and not let the courts decide what happens according to the law. If you write a will and say, I want to walk in here and leave everything I own to Mangal, the guy who begs on the streets, uh, or whoever you like. Um, so you take control of what happens to your assets. Mm -hmm. Speaking of taking control, um, what are some of these financial instruments that you know, one should consider um, when planning uh, to get to that stage of retirement? <clears throat> well, there are a wide array of assets that one can invest in. And again, I mentioned earlier that we, we, we have some misconceptions. You believe that certain instruments, certain investment options are for only folks with, with, um, with the means. And that's not, that's not the case. Um, we can examine treasury bills, bonds. These are financial products that offer slightly higher return than what you'd get right now in the commercial banks. Um, but slightly higher I mean, risk. There's some, there's, some, there's some higher risk, but that's what I say. Let me circle back a bit. Um, again, it's, it all falls into your plan. So let's say you have some money that you want to invest in. Um, you can seek the counsel of an investment advisor. A portfolio can be set up for you. You say, okay, I want some of my money in the short term short-term instruments, some in the medium term, and some in the long term. And in addition to your financial investments, your bonds, your treasury bills, your stocks, there's real estate, which is very common in St. Lucia. A lot of us, we invest in land and, ho and homes, and there's nothing wrong with that. The return on a home or on a piece of land or in real estate in general tends to be longer and a lot harder to convert to cash. So if you want to, if you're planning for retirement, and you're mindful that at the age of retirement, it's likely that you know you may need to do some repairs to your home or you may need to go to see a doctor, something you may need some cash. So it's good to have some liquid assets and not tie up everything in, in one kind of asset. So a basket, a good portfolio of assets is critical. A key instrument in, 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 re, in retirement planning is what's known as a registered retirement account. Because these accounts tend to offer a slightly higher return and the return is consistent depending on the institution. And there's also a tax benefit. A lot of people don't realize that. $8,000 annually is tax deductible, $8,000 in contributions. So it's a very good vehicle, a very good tool to use in planning for retirement. And a number of institutions, including ours, we offer that product in St. Lucia. So when planning for retirement, I mean, it's, it's all encompassing. You're looking towards the future, but you're also helping yourself in the present because you're saving on your tax bill. You have additional cash flow now that allows you to save even more or consume it if needs be. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. De Tovel, you know, we, we have situations where people may get late mortgages and you have yourself in a scenario where um, when you get to retirement age, your expenses are now exceeding, you know, whatever revenues that you generate at that point in time. How, how does one deal with situ situations yeah, like that? I think, again, I think it's a, a question of, of being prepared, understanding, you know, what exactly you're going into. Well, at retirement, your income, your immediate income is reduced, definitely. So whether you're depending on NIC or you're depending on, on a, you know, monthly pension plan, that it, or you have you have taken a lump sum and you expect you know you you have decided how much you, you you're going to be spending there are certain things that come up at you um and we look at for instance you, you, you may have a car you may own a car and that car you figure whether it would last you you know maybe the next 10 years and it may not so you may find yourself after five years looking to to you know to to purchase a new a new vehicle where is it coming from you may own your home I mean, if we're fully paid, I mean, I always believe that, you know, by retirement, you should really have paid for your home. And if you haven't, um, the question is, where would the monthly installments be coming from? 
And in addition to that, we know that you know, as you know, you ha you own a home, and that's not at all. We, we we're looking at the possibility of you know termite infestation of your roof. You're looking at your your plumbing, you know, needing t it's, it's so old that it needs to be replaced. Your cupboards that were pristine, you know, but two years ago no longer you know that pristine things like that. So, so these things crop up, and in a and, and so you're in a situation where you you you, you, you the expenses are there. Where is that income coming from? So as part of the planning, we need to be aware of these possibilities because your expenses do not reduce mm -hmm. when you retire. You know, sometimes you figure, oh, I have a couple of pairs of shoes. The shoes drive out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you may just, you know, things, simple things like that. Well, so you really need to plan your income. And, and maybe sometimes we, we talk about um, passive income, income that you may not necessarily you can earn without necessarily having to be doing the hard work because again by then you know your capacity to earn would may have been reduced so the planning is really really critical and to know exactly where that in so the investments are, are very important I, I hold, that thought, hold that thought hold that thought with you for a break well, okay. uh, we'll be back <laughs> <laughs> pamela I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. Um, we're speaking on retirement planning. Uh, before we went to break, you were about to raise a point on... <clears throat> yes, uh, to what Mrs. Dito was saying about really being prepared. One of the questions in preparing for retirement, one must ask themselves is, how do I want to live? Do I want to maintain the sort of lifestyle I have now? Or am I willing to, to live at a, at, a, at a lower level than I, than I am right now? So it's really key that you spread your retirement investments. One of the things we have to focus on is, let me see how many sources of income I do have. Okay, I may have a pension from where I worked. I may have an NIC pension. Is that enough? Will that cover my expenses? I encourage people to not try not to go into debt as much as possible, close to retirement or at retirement. But the situation may arise, as Mrs. Dito will point out. You never know. Um, so in, in that case, you need to have additional sources. In addition to the retirement accounts that I mentioned earlier, you could have an annuity. Uh, it's a life insurance policy that has a payout at the end, you know. There are varying investments that one can look at. And as we were discussing earlier, looking at alternative forms of income, turning your home into a rent, part rental property, and all these sorts of things. If you were a former teacher, can I still give lessons? Mm -hmm. Or can I do consultancy on the side? Because even if it's a, a house, um, even as Mrs. Dito will indicate, that mm -hmm. you can have a house that's fully paid for, um, but just the maintenance of that property, you may not Can't be able put you to. In debt. You may not be able yeah. to, you know, keep yeah. up with the maintenance of that. Right. Yeah. And if you have kids that are grown and have left, you can ask yourself a question: What can I do to allow this asset to start generating some income for me? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, there's some schools of thought that a house is not really an asset unless it's generating income. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you were to leave the house, you still have to find somewhere to what live. What do so. you say to? Um, valuation of properties though because um i mean you you have what the valuators give you and then you have a market value um what do you say well, i don't to speak out of turn not being a, a, a true commercial <laughs> banker anymore but um the the banks have moved in a different direction the valuation on houses are market-based and that's a critical point because a lot of people may believe that their house is valued at x and it's really valued at z and it's important to know where you stand with the equity in your home because you may be relying on the possibility of selling your house to cover some, some unforeseen expense right. and you may get a lot less or you may be forced to take a lot less. So that's, 
that's critical as well. We need to we need to always be um, aware of what our assets are valued at. Yeah. One thing I want to add on to what um, Omar is saying is in terms of medical insurance. Ah, yes. When you retire, I mean, the likelihood of you know everything that you didn't have time to suffer from while you were busy and engaged it begins to show up, and medical expenses been known to really floor the best of us. Um, so I think it's, it's, you know, it's an area that, uh, that uh, people must be cognizant of um, to continue to maintain their the medical insurance where it exists, um, even past retirement. Um, because, you know, I mean, you know, the stories are, you, you hear um, in relation to, to medical, what medical expenses could do to a family are really horrendous. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something, you know, we, we should be, you know, very much aware of. We did touch on um, that uh, in episode two. Uh, with the NIC and we also had a member of uh, an insurance company on board. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Glasgow, a couple of questions for you. Okay. Uh, you spoke to your dad having a will from the age of 35. Does a will have a lifespan? Um, as long as, that's an excellent question, as long as things don't change too dramatically and then we need to go to our civil code for that because what a lot of people aren't aware of is if you, your marital status changes, you've got to redo your will because you have negated your will. So if you go from being married and get divorced or you just get married after and before you did the will, you've got to go ahead and re redo your will because it's negated under our civil code. Okay, so it's valid, rip it up, it's not worth anything. So the moment you, you change your marital status, that is a critical point, you must go ahead, go back to your lawyer. Hopefully they won't charge you anything as long as you uh, everything stays exactly the same. I was about to ask that. Can the condition <laughs> well, I don't, the same I don't charge my, unless they, as long as it's literally we're going to reread the same will and I'll get a colleague to come in, um, then we don't charge them anything. If they're changing, you know, the clauses yes. in their will, that's a different matter. But if we're literally reproducing the will just because of the matters till status has changed, then we, we don't charge them anything. And those are existing clients, of course, not <laughs> that's not a client of mine. Um, so that is a very important to know that because you may be comfortable thinking, I have a will, but then hang on, two years later you get married. You have to go and do your will again. Okay, so uh, the will doesn't have a timeline. Now, you may go from being 35 to older, as in the case of my dad, and acquire more property. We do have a clause in there that captures that so that if you uh, acquire more property, you can decide what happens to that property. But if, you know, for example, you fall out with the persons who are your beneficiaries, say your kids or whoever it is you're leaving your property to, then you need to change your will. If I always advise clients um, to have more than one executor and, and lawyers get uh, uh, harpooned into being executors on, of own wills and so on. So if you have a, a will, make sure you have more than one executor because if your executor passes away, again, you have a difficulty. So you need to go back and do the will and make sure that you have at least two executors um, who are living and hopefully in the country who can uh, execute your will when the time comes. I don't know if you can quickly respond because we are almost out of time. Okay. Um, but I would like to know, can a will be challenged? Yes, a will. That is a very, <laughs> a will can be challenged if your mental capacity is diminished. Um, you have persons who are suffering from dementia, for example. Uh, you need to get them examined uh, by a doctor in good time to make sure that the dementia is not so far advanced, for example, um, that they are capable of making a will. If they are known to be, uh, there's their mental capacity is diminished, then the will can be challenged, yes. All right, uh, the time went by so quickly. I want to thank you guys, you know, for joining us. Uh, this has been an exciting series. I think you can look forward to the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank bringing you more financial information in terms of how to, you know, manage your finances. This uh, three-part uh, series was based on uh, retirement planning. Um, also, you can uh, look out for the financial information month that's in october where there will be lots of uh, information coming out from the central bank and their partners concerning financial management thank you very much for being with us good day start, start planning for your retirement plan now and Mommy, make your golden years golden i come why not
let's make it happen. I know, I know, I know. I know.